the most important part about this problem is to understand how you can relate two different traverses and then combine them to create a unique tree. And that is what makes this problem so very important for your interviews because it helps the interviewer to understand that you're understanding the tree traverses exactly how they're meant to be. So you're given two traverses, a in-order traversal and a pre-order traversal. And you have to somehow combine them to find a unique tree, correct? So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we'll look at a sample test case. Going forward, we will see how do you even begin start to attempt this problem and what do you do with these two traversal techniques? How do you combine them and find a unique tree? Once you understand the concept, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given two integer arrays that are representing the in-order and pre-order traversal of some particular binary tree, right? And then you have to construct the actual binary tree that is possible with these two given traversals. Now, an important thing to notice over here is that there can be several different trees which have the same in-order traversal and there can be several different trees which have the same pre-order traversal. But if you're given an in-order traversal and a pre-order traversal, both of them, then it will always point to a unique binary tree. You can never have two different binary trees which have the same in-order and the same pre-order traversals. So keep that in mind. And if you're new to pre-order and in-order traversal techniques, I would highly recommend you to stop this video right over here and first check out those explanatory videos first. You can find the link in the description below. So for this particular problem, you are given two tree traversals. This is the in-order traversal and this is the pre-order traversal. And the resultant unique tree, that will look something like this. If you check out this tree, what will be the in-order traversal? The in-order traversal will be left, then the root, and then all these right elements, correct? And if you see what I have in the input, that is the left, that is nine, the root, that is three, and all of these elements that are on the right subtree, correct? And even in this subtree, if you once again apply the in-order traversal, you will get 15, 20, and then seven. And that is what you see over here, correct? And similarly, you can check the pre-order traversal also. So the pre-order traversal is root, then the left, and then the right. So you get root, then the left, and then all the elements in the right. So you see how for this particular input case, you can only construct one binary tree, and this is your answer, correct? If you feel that you have now understood the problem statement even better, feel free to stop the video over here and first try the problem once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. To understand things better, let us take up a bigger test case. So I have this sample test case with me that has some elements, right? And these are the two given traverses. Now, the most important part, or you can say the most difficult part of this problem is to understand, okay, where do I even begin? You cannot just start creating any random tree, right? You cannot just say that, okay, I will take one as my node and then start over there, right? That won't work. There will be so many different combinations and that will not give you any optimal result at all. So you have to start to think of an optimal solution. And more than that, you need to think, okay, where do I even begin? So to begin things, first of all, we need to go back and realize what does the general structure of our binary tree looks like. A general binary tree will have a root and then it will have a left subtree and it is going to have a right subtree, correct? And what comes next? You are given a pre-order traversal and an in-order traversal, right? So if you have this tree and I ask you, okay, what is the pre-order traversal? The pre-order traversal will be simply the root that is just a single element. Then you will have your entire left subtree and then you will have your entire right subtree, correct? For now, forget about all of the elements that are present over here. You just need to focus that what will be the order of these three components, right? And next, what do you do? You have to find out how does the in-order traversal look. So for the same tree, if you have to find out the in-order traversal, what will happen? First of all, you will get your left subtree. Then you will get the only single element that is root and then you are going to get the right subtree, correct? 
So this tells me a very, very important thing. And that is, if you are doing a pre-order traversal, no matter however your tree looks like, the first element will be the root, correct? Because you can see that this is a generic structure and root is the very first element that you will encounter. So this certainly tells you something. It tells me that when I look at my pre-order traversal, eight is the root element in fact, right? So I can safely say that for my resultant tree, eight will be in fact the root element. This gives you some sort of a starting point, correct? You check the pre-order traversal and the first element was the root, right? So you know that, okay, you have identified the root and now you are going to identify all of the remaining elements. Now check once again. In the sample tree, once you have identified the root, what happens in the in-order traversal? In your in-order traversal, the root separates the left subtree and the right subtree, correct? So what you can do is, in your in-order traversal, try to locate this root element. Where do you find it? You find this root element somewhere over here, right? So this tells you a very important piece of information. It simply means that all of the elements to the left of root, they belong to the left subtree, correct? And all of the elements to the right of your root, they are going to belong to the right subtree, right? So in a way, what you can say is I have identified the root and I have identified the left and right subtree elements as well. Right now, you do not know how to arrange all of these elements, but you know for sure that, okay, these will be the elements that are present in my left subtree and the right subtree. I hope you're getting the idea now, right? So now try to think once again, try to look at all of these elements in your pre-order traversal again. You find these three elements in your pre-order traversal over here, and you find these three elements in your pre-order traversal once again over here. So do you see what is happening? you have identified a recurring property. Now you found one more problem where you have an in-order traversal that looks like 7 to 1 and a pre-order traversal that looks like 2, 7, 1, right? And similarly for the right subtree, you have an in-order traversal that says 3, 9, 6 and a pre-order traversal that says 9, 3 and 6. So once again, being a tree, it has a recursive property. So once again, you have to identify the root, correct? So looking at the pre-order traversal, you see that, okay, two is the root and this is where you find a two. So in my left subtree, I can write down a two over here and to the left, I have a seven and to the right, I will have a one. And similarly, I identify the root as nine over here. And based on this, I can populate my right subtree as well. As you can see, we were easily able to identify the unique binary tree that can be formed using these two given traversals. You may also notice that being a binary tree, at every step, you can split the tree into two separate problems, right? As soon as you identify the root, you have a left subtree waiting for you and a right subtree waiting for you. And once again, you can apply the same technique on this left subtree and on this right subtree. Once again, identify the root and then split your tree into two parts. So just based upon exactly this idea, we can come up with a dry run of the code. Let us quickly check it out and you're going to remember this technique for the rest of your lives. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have these two arrays, pre-order and in-order that are passed in as an input parameter to the function build tree. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create a map. And this is the in-order index map. So you realize, right? For example, when you found out that, okay, three is my root, you need to quickly identify where does three exist in my in-order array, right? This map will help you to identify it. What you just do is you create an index map. So in this map, all my key values will be the elements of the array and all the values will be the index. So as soon as you find out that, okay, three is my root value. You can quickly look up in this array and identify that, okay, three lies at index one. As soon as you find this out, you are able to split your problem into two halves. So that is why this map becomes essential. You do not have to iterate through your in-order array again and again. So this is saving you time at every iteration, correct? 
So once this map has been initialized, I now have a helper function that will split the tree into two halves at every instance. So let us check out how this split tree function actually works. You pass in several parameters. First of all, you pass in whatever your pre-order traversal is. And next, I pass in this index map because I have to quickly look up where does my root lie so that I can split the left subtree and the right subtree. Next, I pass in the root index, which is zero at the moment because root is the very first element of your pre-order traversal, correct? And then I pass in a left bound and a right bound. So currently you have the entire array. So left is at zero and right is at the very most end of your array, correct? Once you are in the split tree function, what happens? You have to create a new tree node, right? This is where the construction of your tree starts. And what do you populate it with? You populate it with the root index, right? The root index is zero. So you populate it with three. So I start creating a tree now that looks like this. Both of its children are null right now, correct? Moving on, you have to now create the left subtree and the right subtree. If you remember our technique, what did we do with the root? We looked up our root in the in order traversal to identify that, okay, this is my left subtree and this is the right subtree. So I look up this root value in my index map and I will get the value. I get this value as one. So this is how I know that I have to separate it over here. And then once again, I will split it. When I split it, I do root dot left and I pass in my pre-order array again, the in order map once again, the root index now changes and I will look at the next value. And then I pass in the left bound and the right bound. And similarly, for the right subtree, I will pass in both the pre-order array and the in order index map. But this time, I will change my left boundary and the right boundary. So the left boundary starts at 15 and the right boundary ends at 7. So you can see that what will happen in the next iteration. This will once again behave as a fresh problem and you are going to populate your left subtree and the right subtree in a similar technique that the way we just discussed. Once all of this is done, this loop ends and you simply return root as your answer. This is how you are able to uniquely determine what is the binary tree. The time complexity of this solution is order of n, where n is the length of your pre-order array and the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because you need an extra space to create your map with your indexes, right? I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that in this particular problem, you were given a pre-order traversal and an in-order traversal. You use both of them to uniquely create a binary tree, correct? What happens? If you're given a post-order traversal and an in-order traversal, can you still create the binary tree? And what happens if you get a pre-order traversal and a post-order traversal? Are you able to create a binary tree then? So just try to get a piece of paper and plot out all of these different traversals and try to come up with a binary tree using the same concept that we just discussed. Because you can be damn sure that as a follow-up question, you will be asked this in an interview. So just get out your pen and paper and let me know what you think. Let us discuss all of it in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. Also, let me know if you faced any problems while going throughout the video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.